Once again, Felix and I were having the same awful dream. Owing to a callous twist of fate, we found ourselves utterly penniless. What would become of us now? The life of a common soldier? A lowly policeman, perhaps? Or, God forbid, a barrow boy? Felix and Chives, madam. Enter! Dr. Edward Niblick was a key figure of the Victorian era. A notable academic, with insight sharp, he was also a keen sportsman, playing cricket for his country from the early age of 18. A dangerous bat, a brilliant field and perhaps the very finest slow bowler of his decade. Terribly sorry I'm late. Now that we're all here. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen. As you're aware, we are gathered to hear the last wishes of the late Dr. Edward Nibley. In short, he was a singular man in whom the glory of humanitas didst live and breathe. He was also extremely rich. And we, his sole heirs. As such, we'd waited patiently for him to, well, shall we say, retire to the pavilion for many threadbare years. Well, what would you have done? We decided to pay the dear old chap a visit. And stumped him. And in his will, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Edward Niblick has left as his entire legacy to you, Mrs. Felix and Chives, this cricket bat. For all our efforts, our assets amounted to a single cricket bat. <laughs> Felix was outraged. One might sympathize but a true nobleman knows that nothing can rob him of his rightful destiny. I, for one, suspected that there may have been more to our great uncle's gift than did at first meet the eye. As we returned homeward, the first of a string of strange incidents occurred. I really rather think we should be going. Tea? To my mind, it was now obvious that the bat which our uncle had bequeathed was no snub at all, but something that would liberate us from the lives of all those little people. This is indeed a most remarkable bat. Yes. The grain, the feel of it, the sheer majesty of the thing. It's a bat quite like no other. Yes, yes, a remarkable bat. Yes. And one that is going to make us rich. And how's that? Well, what is it? that we desire more than anything else in the world. What do we want? At any cost. <laughs> My dear fellow, at the expense and effort of anyone but ourselves. 
That which our breeding and true station in life demands. Uh, of course, to be rich. The same. Richer than rich. Richer, even. All those little people with their little lives. They work so damnably hard. One would almost think they enjoyed it. Yeah. Like bees in a hive. Like termites in a mound. Like eyes in a stinking nest. Well, it's not for me. But my dear fellow, whoever said that it was? Yes, I have a funny feeling that this bat may be the answer to our prayers. Lottery numbers, child. Seven, two, six, four, twenty-two, twenty-four. Oh, good hey. Thank you. Those beggars, they've got uh, cash. And what's more, they're blind. So I see. If they are blind, would it not be beyond the realms of possibility to simply remove what is required from their begging cap? Thus, oh, of course, child. I'm mindless of me. Thank you. Not at all, my good man. With this lottery ticket and great Uncle Niblick's blessings, we were surely within sight of a payback beyond our wildest dream. I shall move to the Canaries, have fancy car, expensive prostitute. Actually, old boy, I've been thinking. I may give my share to charity. Whoever said that it was.